What's going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture, and I got a third installment of showing off some hot books, spec books from my collection in this box right over here that you guys can't see. But before I get into the books, guys, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. And again, rocking some official Journals, Comics merch. There is a link below to where you guys can get your hands on some of that. Uh, and if you are interested in supporting the channel at just $3.99 a month, become a patron of the channel via patreon.com. Check out the link below for that as well. Uh, we got the patron-only contest going on right now. We're only eight patrons away. But without further ado, guys, let's get into talking about some books. I did two other videos this last week um, trying to get through this box, and I still got a decent amount here that we're going to go over today. So let's get into it. I got the first one right here, and this is a run that I have been really slowly focused on over the last however many months and you know i i don't think that a lot of people will recognize how many like you know kind of minor keys or keys or first appearance type books are in here that could definitely pick up momentum especially if some of these characters show up in the mcu and we're going to start off with strange tales issue number 138 this is the first appearance of eternity and this is a character that I absolutely feel can show up in the MCU. I've talked about that before. The MCU is going more cosmic. And I definitely see this character playing a role at some point. This is a nice uh, mid-grade. Again, a lot of mid-grades uh, in this box that I've been showing off, especially with the Silver Age books. Uh, I would call this book maybe a, a 4.0. Uh, I'm just rough estimate. Lots of damage to the spine and one decent color break right there. But again, otherwise, what I love is books that present well. And in the Mylar, it looks really nice. All right, moving on to some more Strange Tales. And that's Strange Tales 157. This is the first cameo appearance of the Living Tribunal. Okay, it's a, it's a back page appearance that leads into the next story uh this book is really really nice i would say this book is at least a 6.0 it's nice and clean it's got a little roughage down here but um really nice book again guys don't overlook cameos you know and whether you believe um in the terminology of cameo versus full or whatnot whatever you guys desire or if you think that a cameo a first cameo it doesn't matter if it's a cameo or not that's their first appearance Go after them. They are most likely going to be more affordable, especially for books if you can't afford the first full appearances. But hey, if a character has a, ca a first cameo appearance and you can get your hands on it for a decent price, it's still, to me, a key book. But you got to look at first full appearances. And this is the first full appearance of the Living Tribunal plus cover appearance. Uh, this is Strange Tales number 158. Again, another character that I think has a future in the MCU. You know, this character, uh, it wasn't talked about that much, but this character was um, kind of name-dropped and Easter-egged in the Doctor Strange film and uh, by uh, Wong. I do believe it was it was Wong who who mentioned, the, I think he said, the, uh, the staff of the Living Tribunal. Uh, this uh, is a decent copy. Uh, definitely some spine wear but no big color breaks uh, i would like to call this no lower than a 4.5 but shoot i mean on a good day it might be able to get up to a 5.5 so i'd call it a nice 5.0 somewhere right in the middle nice colors though on it still really beautiful book all right guys uh, this book next is just i you know for anybody my age <laughs> death of superman in the black poly bag still. This is the one that I got off the shelf when I was a kid. I still have it. I have like a, a few other copies of these open. Well, I actually have another one still in the bag. And then I have a couple open. I think I have like the um, third and fourth print as well. But guys, look, I know. Don't, don't, it, it's not about the value of that book. It's just I still, I still love it. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. This is another really cool kind of a spec book. And this is a Supernatural Thrillers number five. First appearance of the Living Mummy. Look, 
we we know that the MCU is is starting to go down the the horror genre route. Okay, we got uh, Multiverse of Madness that's going to kick that off. We know we got Blade coming into the MCU. We got Morbius over there with Sony that we know is going to some way and s some way somehow is going to tie in with the MCU. Um, and look, th it, this is another book that if you can get this book for decently cheap, why not? I mean, it's still a classic Bronze Age book. Um, I can't remember what I picked this up for. This is a really decent mid-grade again. I'd say maybe like a, a 5.0. Um, and I think I got this book for like $10. I can't remember off the top. You know what? I, 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 I've been starting to track the values, my purchase prices in my CLZ app, but I would like to uh, write them on the uh, the back of the boards as well. All right, guys. Moving on. These are some of my favorites right here. Some of my favorites. All right. <sighs> One of the runs that I've been working on for a long time now is Thor. And again, a lot of Silver Age keys in Thor. A lot of Silver Age, Bronze Age, actually. But um, this is Thor 134, first appearance of High Evolutionary. I absolutely believe that the High Evolutionary is going to be in the MCU within the next three to five years. That's my guess. Now, this book, I got for, what, 30 bucks? I don't know when. It's been a little while now. Uh, again, a decent looking mid-grade. I'd say at least a 5.0. I could give it a press and I might clean it up a little bit. But um, High Evolutionary, I think, is a, is a really, really uh, key character that could show up in the MCU soon. Um, especially with, look, we got a couple things going on. Obviously, Adam Warlock, we know that High Evolutionary has a lot to do in the comic books at least with Adam Warlock and, and including the X-Men. You know, the High Evolutionary can, can play a part with bringing the X-Men in too. So again, this is a book that right now, I think if you could get this, just and again, I always tell people, do your homework. If, if, if you have any type of love for the book, don't just buy it because I'm, I'm saying this is a good one to, to possibly go after. Do you like Thor? Do you like the character High Evolutionary? Do you collect Marvel? Do you collect Silver Age? All those things. Are you willing to take the risk with the speculation? But if you could find this for a good value right now, this one is, it's a Silver Age key that has that long-term value no matter of speculative height. But once this character has any type of announcements, I think this is going to be a big one and we're going to see some, some nice big jumps for this book. All right, guys, I talked about um, the four Thor books, which I don't have them all right here. Some of them are uh, in my stack ready to get pressed. But I talked about the four Thor books. One of them is actually up here waiting to get pressed, huh, too. All right, I'll show this one off real quick because I just got this one not too long ago. And that's Thor 162. Uh, and it's Thor 161, Thor 162, Thor 168, and Thor 169 that bring in the origin of Galactus. And 168 tends to be the most valuable of all the four. But I got 169 here. I just recently picked up 168 as well. I got this book. Um, this is a decent, I would say maybe, again, anywhere from, I would say a 5.0 to a 5.5. This book was marked like $14. And I think it was half off at a sale um last year sometime so i got this book for like seven dollars and even in this uh mid-grade you know I, I i off the top of my head 30 40 plus dollars right now so those are four books that i was uh trying to make sure i had all of them before there's any galactus hype in the movies and you know i uh, made it happen all right guys here's another thor book I've had this one since I was a kid, so it's kind of beat up, but that's okay. And that's Thor 225, first appearance of Fire Lord. Uh, I don't know if you guys could see how beat up it is. It's probably like a 2.5. I would say probably a 2.5, maybe a 3.0 on a good day if I gave it a press and clean. But um, yeah, well loved. But Fire Lord, uh, Herald of, of Galactus that could show up in the MCU. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think probably most of us would, would want to see a Silver Surfer at least first, but this is something that can happen as well. Um, yeah, this book, 
like I said, I don't care if it's beat up. One day I would I would like to um upgrade. I don't really I'm not too focused as an upgrader. Like if I have an issue, a copy of a, of a book, I'm usually content. But for that one, I wouldn't mind getting a higher grade at a more decent uh, price. All right, here's another fun one, uh, especially since uh, uh, we just uh, watched uh, Infinity War and Endgame again last night. And this is Thor 390. This is where Cap shows that he's worthy and picks up Mjolnir. And uh, this book has been, you know, ever since, you know, uh, Endgame, this book has gotten hot. You know, uh, I, again, I don't have prices at the top of my head, but I remember this being about a $5 book. Then it went to a $10 book. And then I saw it crossing like over $30 in, in high grade. And this is absolutely uh, a high grade. This is um, uh, probably not a 9.8, but probably at least a 9.4. And that's without a press. Maybe I could give it a press and get a little higher. All right, guys. Um, this is This was in... Uh, a-OK -okay from awesome friend and friend of the channel, Simon R. And this is a um, exclusive virgin cover variant from IG Comic Store of Thor number five. Look at that beautiful cover. And of course, it's the first appearance of Black Winter. Look at that. So big shout out to Simon. Big shout out. Thank you so, so much for this book. Even has a certificate of authenticity back there. It says um, uh, 466 out of 600 copies. Beautiful cover. I don't know who the artist is. Does it say it? It does not say the artist on the certificate, but still very, very beautiful. All right, guys. This is a really cool one. Um, I think any kind of tribute or cover swipe of this cover is uh just fun to collect not not a big key or anything just a fun book to have and that's what if uh number 58 what if punisher kills spider-man again just an iconic cover um this this book in in high grade has, has a little bit of value you know i mean i've seen these books go for 20 bucks um but you know like i said not really a key but for me it's just a fun book especially since asm 129 is one of my all-time all-time grails so all right guys another one that I think has a lot of spec value right now. And if you can't afford X-Men 121, <laughs> go for X-Men 120. I still don't have 121, which is the first full appearance of Alpha Flight. This is the first cameo appearance of the team. And uh, I got this book at A1 Comics um, a couple years back for, I think it was like $8 and it was a 50% off sale. So I think I got it for four bucks. I mean, this book in a high grade, I, last time I checked, I think can easily go for um, over 30 bucks. So, but but hey, look, again, be, I, I talk heavily on X-Men stuff right now. Uh, we know that they're coming before we see the X-Men in the MCU. I think right now was a good time. If you're into X-Men, if you're willing to um, invest and in, in spend your money on X-Men books, I think right now was a very, very good time before some of these really shoot through the roof and, and never come back down. Um, and Alpha Flight is 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 definitely a team. There's been some talk, some speculation talk, but nothing official at all. But you know, I, I think the Alpha Flight run is an underrated run, uh, in my opinion. And I think there can be a lot of things done with them in the MCU. All right, this is a one of just a, a classic and favorite book of mine. Um, it holds a lot of uh, sentimental meaning to me, but it also can be a bit of a minor key. And this is Uncanny X Men two fifty six. The first appearance of the new Psylocke. <laughs> Just sick. I, I love her in this in this uh, suit right here. This book, look. I love Psylocke, okay? And I think that if Psylocke was brought into the MCU, I think telling her story on how she becomes the new Psylocke and, and how they, if they pair it with what happened in the comics, this book can definitely be a little something. I mean, it's a little something right now. You know, it's, it, it's not a... Uh, dollar bin or two three dollar book you know in in high grade right now even so i would just i would love to see this psylocke and her story be told in the mcu all right guys i got a couple copies this is a little semi-key and again uh, a character that you know uh might have a future Possibly in the MCU, but it's it's just a fun book for me because it's a it's an awesome cover swipe. 
And that's X-Men Annual number 10, the first appearance of Longshot. And it's not really the money book because uh, uh, the first appearance of Longshot really in continuity is Longshot number one. And uh, that's more sought after since this is an annual book. I got two of them. I got the newsstand and the direct. But I just think it's cool because, look, I mean, it holds the first appearance. And it's a cool cover swipe off a of giant size number one. So it's a really cool book. This is a really affordable book to get if you can find it. And, you know, if you can find this book for under 10 bucks in high grade, to me, it's a why not. Um, especially if you are an X-Men fan. Boom. All right, guys, what would a video be without an exclusive variant? Well, I already showed off one variant, but let's show off another one. And cool story behind this, because there's there's been two books, and I might have the other one in here to show off too. There's two books that I've bought in my life where I've spent over cover price for, for a variant. Only two. One of them is the Shattered Variant Amazing Spider-Man 800. 300 cover swipe, ASAP 300 cover swipe. Uh, I paid what, you know, $29.99 or whatever they did when they released these. I just, I love ASM 300 and I like collecting the cover swipes. And I said, you know what? Why not? So this is one out of two that I actually had paid for. You know, I talk a lot about, uh, I'm not really big on variants or paying that big money for variants. And, and, you know, I also hear a lot of the hate. Oh, variants are ruining the hobby and all this stuff. Whatever, I'm not going to get into that today. But this is one that I did say, I really love this cover. I'm willing to spend a little bit of money on that. All right, another really cool book that's been really getting hot, guys. ASM 300, uh, excuse me, 700. Doc Ock on the cover and another ASM 300 cover swipe. This book has been creeping. I am really happy to have this. I've thought about sending this off to uh, CGC. I don't know if it would get a 9.8 because there's a little bit of a smudge right down there. But, I mean, you never know. Other than that, it's it's perfect. It would get at least a 9.6. All right, guys. This is my raw issue. And I have a graded 9.8. But this is a book that is uh, just iconic. You know, 300 issue of Spawn. But again, another... 300 asm 300 cover swipe and this book is is still up in value you know you're not finding this book at cover price anymore or even close i haven't checked lately but i know a, a 9.8 was going for like well 9.8 cgc was going for well over 100 bucks so i could probably send this in and get another 9.8 but i'm good well 9.8 is fine all right guys here is my second book that i've sent in or that i've sent in that i've purchased for more than cover price that's a variant and guess what it is? Another ASM cover swipe. This is Venom number one, uh, Mayhew variant. And I just thought this book was beautiful. I think I paid, what was it, like $19.99 for, for this one? $24.99? I don't know. So, somewhere around there. But just beautiful. So those are the only two books. The Shattered variant in this that I've ever paid more than cover price for when it comes to a variant. All right, guys. We are almost about to wrap it up here. Um... I got a couple more things to talk about. And one, I'm going to pull these out first, is the facsimile uh, editions that have been coming out. Guys, there's been a demand for these. And look, I, I'm not trying to hype these up. You know, I don't want to get blamed for saying, oh, you're trying to manipulate the market. But there's been a de demand for these to where um, if you don't get these when they first come out, people are willing to pay a little bit of money for them, whether it's like 10 or even $15. You know, when cover price is what, $3.99 still, right? Yeah. So, again, I'm not saying that, oh, these are key books or anything. But I, there's, in the, I think it's always been like this, guys. There's something about reprints, especially uh, facsimile reprints, where, you know, they have the original ads and, and so forth. Um, next to, like, a True Believers. But even some True Believers, you know, get a little bit of a high demand. Those, um, the Spider-Man Venom True Believer that was the ASM cover swipe uh, or reprint. You know, I saw those issues going on eBay for like anywhere from 5 to $10. So, you know, it's just really interesting. So my thing about these is I just always get them. You know, I always get them when they come out. Pay cover price. They're they're fun to have. And, um, you know, if you ever need to fall back, I don't sell my books. But, I mean, hey, if I can sell a, something like this for 10 bucks at some point down the road, if I need a little bit of money, I made a little bit of money. 
But for me, I buy these just because I think they're really, really cool. That's why. And because maybe some of them, I don't know if I'll ever own the original copy. Like, I still don't have one of those. And I still don't have one of those. <laughs> right? All right, guys. A couple more things to show off. Uh, the next thing to show off is I won't show them all. I have two sets of these, though. So I'll just show my number ones. Infinity Gauntlet, number one, guys. Um, you know, when Infinity War was officially announced, these kind of spiked. But then they kind of dropped out a little bit. But as of late, they've been gradually gaining value. And I just, I, it's inevitable. I mean, th these aren't, you know, th th there's a lot of them out there. So, you know, I don't, I don't think at least anytime soon, these books are going to be, um, you know, really, really huge keys, but they're gaining ground and, and to have either, um, you know, uh, the, those high grades, especially in 9.8s and these books are close to it. I, I, I most likely will send one of these off to get graded at one point. Uh, they're both directs, but um, I think this one on, on top here can be a 9.8. This one, close, but but it'd be tough. But anyways, I just had to show these off. I just watched Infinity War again uh, last night. So classic, classic books from the early 90s, regardless of their values, guys. So um, let's see. I think that's it, guys. Yep. That is it. So with that being said, guys, I finally got through my box. It took three videos. But uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm glad I could uh, take some time to share these with you. Let me know what you guys think of all the books that I showed off today. What do you have? What don't you have? What are you looking for? So again, thank you guys for watching. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. And until next time.